Welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet Channel. Today we got another catch, clean, and cook. And you get to name the dish. So y'all stay tuned. <music> day we got over to the uh, Indian River Lagoon and the Jack Carval were everywhere. Y'all check this out. Boy those things pound for pound. They are some good fighters. So they got him right in the eyeball. If I just try to lift him up, I'm just gonna yank his eyeball right out of him. Now, if you don't think being a YouTube content producer is hard, I'm out here running the boat, catching the fish, netting my own fish, and trying to run a camera. So, Some of this video ain't perfect. It's because I can't do this and film at the same time. And I got this guy on like 15 pound test braid, and he's the strongest fish in the ocean. Or one of. And he ain't even tired yet. I don't want to knock the lure out of his mouth with the net like I did a big Kobe over at the Tampa Bay last on my last trip. So there we go. Canal tuna, nice one, about two pounds. That was a big one too. They're still all in this area. See the one going a little faster. I to figure out what they want. They don't want this. Exactly, or I catch one every cast. I can pipe it down and throw that top water. Oh. They are strong. For a minute there, I had another one on the live bait out back. At the same time, this one hit it. And I'm like, okay, well now what am I gonna do? I got this one right in the mouth, so just kind of leader land him. Well, we used to throw all those guys back. Um, you know, everybody said they were trash fish, but. If you go back and look at our channel on the uh, our Trash Fisher Treasure video, you'll find out they're not really trash. You just got to know how to cook them and clean them. So right here, we're going to show you how we clean these. So here are our Jack Creval fillets, and these are the ones that we left uh, skin and scales on them. So this method of cooking is called uh, on the half shell, and I never, when I first heard that term, I didn't, I'm like, where are you going to find a shell big enough to cook that on? But what they mean by that, or those who coined it mean skin and scales on, so um, you know, it's going to have uh, something between the fish and the meat, which we commonly do and have been doing for years with our smoke fish. Uh, just recently it's been referred to as on the half shell. Okay, to prepare our fillets, first thing we're going to do is uh, just going to get some oil down on the pan under there and just roll them in it real good on the skin side. You can dust them on the skin side. We don't want them to stick to what we're going to cook them on is a grill. So a little oil on that side and then some oil on the flesh side. If you don't have some of these yet, you can get these little squirt bottles here from uh, Walmart for like, I don't know, like 89 cents each. They're great oil dispensers. Way more control with that than trying to get it out of the bottle. This is some straight up uh, Seminole Swamp seasoning. I'm only going to put that on the meat side. 
Okay, so let's swamp. So over here behind me, we got the grill getting ready. We'll show you what we do next. Okay, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna make a couple of little we're gonna make a couple boats for our uh, for our fillets there. We're just gonna roll the Take a good piece of foil and roll it up on the edges. We want to make sure it's big enough for our flay to uh, sit in. So, whatever size fillets you have, you can uh, make it fit. You just want it to be where uh, liquid won't come out of it. So, I'll just take them and roll them like so. Alright, we already got uh, some. We already got oil on the skin side, so we don't have to worry about that. Put our fillet right in our boat. Now we'll make one for the other one. When you're making these, always remember the general rule of foil. Shiny side toward the meat. Okay? So in this case, shiny side up. This one's going to be a lot easier than the first one I made. By rolling at it, it doesn't allow any of the juices to come out of there. So there we go, number two. Perfect. Next thing we have here is some compound butter we made earlier. Now this is just, uh, we took some butter and softened it. Uh, we mixed in cilantro and garlic. And we wrapped it in wax paper. Parchment paper actually works a little better than wax paper, I just didn't have any. We put it back in the fridge and let it harden up. So what we're going to do with this, while it's still cold, we're going to cut it in like little cookies. This is one full stick of butter, about three tablespoons of cilantro, and two big garlic cloves. So then we're just going to take these little cookies of our compound butter. I'm going to put about three of them on each one of our fillets. Just like that. And when these cook, that's going to just melt right down into that fillet. So now that we have our compound butter done for those, we're going to go ahead and make a couple little little tents for each one. Again, I always go uh, shiny side toward the meat. This is a big aluminum foil, so I'm going to fold it in half. And we're just going to kind of make a tent. I'm just going to kind of poke it down in the inside of our little boat, getting it down inside of the edges. So. These guys are going to go camping up underneath there. Show you one more time. It's a little big, but we'll make it work. Pull it in half for this side. I'm going to pull it maybe a couple more times to get it to fit this guy. And then we're going to tuck it, tuck it down into the edge of our roll. Okay, so it's not completely sealed. So it can let some of the moisture out, but definitely where we, and the reason why we do this, there's a good reason why we do this, because all the steam that, all the steam that rises up as this cooks, we want that to go back down inside the boat and not out of, out of the boat. So all, all the moisture will be captured inside the little tinfoil boat. Okay, over here we got a Weber kettle going, and uh, it's raging hot 450 so we're gonna go down here to our little adjustment knob and we're gonna kick that guy back we want to look about 350 okay yeah, we're just uh, getting that hot so we can clean the grill so we'll do that so we have our Weber kettle grill set up for indirect grilling so we're gonna take our boats and we're gonna put them on the indirect side over here and a nice big spatula will help a lot with this endeavor. Or if you have a pizza peel, it will also work great. And they're pretty tight in here, but we'll make them work. Just make sure that your tent is inside of your boat. So all those juices stay in there. Okay. We got her shut down about 350. Let's go ahead and put the lid back on. We want this vent right over top of the fish.
you know, we've been at this uh, channel now for about seven years and I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on materials and cameras and gear, uh, trips to go fishing, uh, probably 10,000 hours behind a computer editing these videos for you guys' enjoyment. So I wanted to tell you about uh, something we just launched and that's our new Patreon page. So if you'd like to become a member of the Backwoods Gourmet Patreons, uh, we'll leave a link down in the description box. We appreciate every single one of you guys. It's been about 30 minutes, so we're just going to go in and take a quick look-see at those. Man, that looks awesome. I'm going to see if this meat's flaking yet. Uh, it needs just a little more time. You see how all that butter and juices are pulled in the bottom there. Take a look at this one. Oh yeah. Smelling great. Maybe a little more time. cool down the room temperature where you can handle it now and you see that it's very flaky so what we're going to do is you know this is on the half shell the skin's still on the scales are still on the other side so what we're going to do is just carefully peel that meat right off that skin and scales if you've watched uh, any of my smoked fish videos before you'll know that we do this a lot with smoked fish with the skin and scales uh, on them. These, these uh, jacks have a very, very tender and very small uh, scales on them. So it might work better if you just flip them over and try to gently peel that off. That worked pretty well. Okay, so we're just gently peeling the skin off of them. Now, remember from back in the cleaning part, we didn't take any of the, the pin bones out. So we're going to separate them right at that line, and we can feel them right in there. That's, the, that's where the pin bones are. So if you want to, you can go ahead and just grab a knife like this, and just kind of grab that area where the pin bones are and just put that back on your, on your pan. So you can feel that real nice. And we're not taking any of this uh, the leftovers from the compound butter off of there. But you just want to make sure, absolutely sure, that you don't have any of the pin bones off. So we'll do the exact same thing with the other fillet and we'll get it all over here. In now this we bowl. got the fish separated from the skin and the pin bones. We're just going to go in and just with our hands we're just going to lightly flake this apart. We don't want it to, to be into uh, flying pieces but just flaking it apart. And while you're doing that you're also checking for any more pin bones. We did take a little bit of this red meat out it's easy to flake apart or flake off. This is going to be very strong. So I'm going to take most of that, the bigger pieces of that anyway, um, that will come off. You know, if it's thin, I don't mind it at all. But if we have some big flakes of the red meat, we're going to go ahead and leave that behind. It's not too bad. This is a was pretty, you know, almost perfect size if you're going to eat a jacker valve. Um, these were about perfect, three, four pounders. Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, assemble our salad. We have uh, onions. These are sweet onions. I would suggest using sweet onions. A um, couple of uh, sticks of diced celery. Going to be a nice crunch there. And some diced pickles. right into the bowl. And of course, the next thing we need is mayo. Use real mayo, not salad dressing, okay? We'll start out easy and just start to spread that over the top first and we'll just like try to like fold it in. You don't want to break up the lumps in the fish. And you don't want it all shredded like canned tuna.
we're going to make a quick soy wasabi sauce. What we already did here was we take uh, four tablespoons of soy sauce, uh, put it in a, a saucepan and just warmed it up to its bubbling. Then we took one tablespoon of soy sauce and one tablespoon of, or one teaspoon, I'm sorry, of cornstarch, mixed that together, put it in until this thickened. Okay, it's thickened up. And you can readjust that with more soy. And then what we're going to do is plain old wasabi paste. This is the good stuff, the concentrated stuff like you get for sushi. So we're going to start out, and this is a kind of two taste thing, but we'll put it right on the end of the whisk there so we can kind of see how much we're getting. And we'll just go ahead and whisk that in. And it, it, it's not the easiest thing to completely incorporate, so you really got to get in there and work on it to get it to all break up and mix in there. So a little whisking time, and we'll just keep adding it until it uh, tastes right for you. But once you get that uh, that balance correct between the soy and the wasabi, it, it is a wonderful thing. So we'll go ahead and finish that up. We'll get ready to plate. Alright, so we want to get our soy wasabi sauce into our little squirt bottle. And here's the easiest way i found. This is a, my funnel for my canner. It doesn't fit the lid perfectly of these things, but at least it will catch... Uh, major your major catastrophes let's use a silicone spatula you see how nice and thick that is it's almost a uh, consistency of syrup and that's what we're looking for turns out that uh, first little dollop of wasabi I put in there was just about perfect if you overdo your wasabi um, and you want to correct it you can even put in more soy sauce which will thin down your sauce or you could put in a little bit of agave nectar and it also makes it pretty damn awesome. So there we go, that's going to be enough of this dish. And we didn't make a huge mess. We'll put our squeeze bottle lid on and now that is where we can control it. Okay, uh, as you probably figured out already, first one we're going to do is a salad sandwich. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a generous amount of our, uh, our Jack Creval. I know, I have tasted this and it's pretty damn awesome, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, over top of that, just a little drizzle of our soy wasabi. We got a few fresh spinach leaves. Go on there, you could use lettuce, if you like lettuce better. I like spinach better. Got our top layer. And we're going to go ahead and just cut that. Short time. And over our plate. Right. We got some uh, stabbers to just to make it look more professional. sauce guy here and we're just going to put a little bit of our sauce in there to dip okay there you go that's the sandwich version and don't forget to name the dish and remember we're going to name the the salad itself uh, so but there is how you make fish salad sandwiches Here we're going to make the uh, no carb version. What we did is take one of our little, our little ramekins, and we just lined the inside of it with plastic wrap. Okay, and so as you probably guessed already. We're going to go ahead and just fill it with our salad and just press it down in there. And hopefully, this will work. It may or may not. So I'm going to give that a pretty generous amount. We're just going to press it enough to make sure there's no air pockets in there. Then we'll see how this works. And if it doesn't work, you'll get to see that too. So we'll set that to the side. It would probably be better if we chilled that for a while before we uh, tried to take it out, but need to get this up for you. So 
Again, you can use uh, any kind of greenery you like. Here we're just going with what we got, which is um, some baby spinach, which I love. We're going to just kind of cover the plate, the bottom of the plate with baby spinach. You could do a full salad on here, but I want the uh, fish salad to really be the star of the show. So here we go. We'll try to turn it out. All right, right in the middle. Separate this. And the ramekin should come right off. Okay, and it did. Now, you're going to be the carefully, carefully, very, very carefully, we will remove the plastic wrap. And there's your mold of our fish salad. Didn't get it quite in the middle, but that's okay. So right on top of that, and over also over your spinach, the drizzle of soy wasabi. And there you go. There's the no carb version. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and give the sandwich a try. It really looks good. I mean, it really looks nice. Look at that. Hopefully, it won't squirt out everywhere. If you weren't to tell anybody, nobody would ever know that that is Jackerbell. Um, tastes almost like uh, like fresh tuna, like you made it with fresh tuna. So another great use for one of our uh, most commonly caught, everybody calls trash fish, the Jackerbell. Make this salad right here, hey guys, and don't forget, right down here in the comments box, we need a name for this dish. Most likes wins. And then we'll post your name and give you credit for naming the dish. the back was gourmet if you like what we're doing hit that subscribe button right there if you want to see our last video check it out right up here and for a whole playlist of catch clean and cook videos they're right up here we'll see you next time